Good afternoon students, we are meeting after a small gap. So in the last session we had covered, we had begun to cover your European unity and the theme is that if there is a question which comes in the UPSC that there was unity as well as disunity during Cold War, then how would you address that question? From our discussions of Cold War you can talk about the disunity which prevailed in Europe and across the other parts of the world because of the fight between capitalism and communism. But with respect to unity what you can talk about is that within the capitalist camp and within the communist camp there was rise in unity. So there was disunity between the two camps but within those camps there was rise in unity. That unity was political unity, economic unity, military unity and that is how things are progressing. Right? So therefore as part of the European unity we were discussing the establishment or the run up to the establishment of the European Union. So there we had discussed these things organization for European economic cooperation it was mainly for distribution of the martial aid that how to distribute the martial aid, how to best utilize the money which has been given by the US, how to decrease the tariff barriers among each other so that the investment which the US is making in the form of cheap loans, they give a better return on investment. Right? So therefore OEC was for utilization of martial aid or how to best utilize the martial aid just for the purposes of revision we are discussing it right and this OEC it was formed around the year of 1948 and it remained till 1961 when it got converted into OECD. So it got converted into OECD when it got converted into OECD organization for European economic cooperation. So when your US and Canada they are entering into OECD then your OEEC is getting converted into OECD. When your US and Canada they are being added to OEEC that is becoming Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development OECD which today you read about in your current affairs. That is how your world history is relevant to current affairs. Anyways after this we discussed what? After this came your let us try to deal with, let us try to achieve economic unity by coordinating in the domain of coal and steel. So therefore if this is point number one then came your European Coal and Steel Community ECSC. It came in the year 1951 just six years after the World War I, World War II. What is the idea here? goal is war reconstruction let us economically cooperate in the domain of coal and in the domain of steel because in industrialization coal and steel they are important goods right. So therefore what is the focus here focus is how to decrease the tariff barriers and what is the second focus see not just reduction of tariff barriers. What is the special about European coal and steel community? The speciality about European coal and steel community is certain political unity. What is political unity? Political unity in the extreme sense is union of two countries becoming one country. But is policy unity connected with political unity? Yes. When two countries they decide that we are going to have common policies that is a step towards political unity. And here the countries they decided that we are going to have common industrial policy in the coal sector and the steel sector. Common or coordinated economic policies. In coal and steel sector. This gives huge amount of positive results. So therefore now they think कि अगर हमें coal and steel में इतना फायदा हो रहा है तो हम किसी और चीज़ में क्यों नहीं कर सकते? बाकी चीज़ों को भी क्यों नहीं लेके आ सकते? So therefore this results in what? This results in point number three. That is now there is European Economic Community (EEC) which gets established in the year 1957. Here they are going beyond coal and steel. 
that is these are for coal and steel is being handled by ECSC the items which are outside of the coal and steel they are being handled by EEC and therefore what is the idea obviously the same idea is there decrease tariffs same idea is there coordinate policies and ultimately now because of ECSC plus with EEC what do you have you have common market something if you read the material in your newspapers then what do you read that European Union is a common market when when does a when do two countries they become common market when does Europe becomes a common market why is SARC not a common market why is ASEAN a common market when the Germans they will be able to send their products very easily in France then it is a common market what is the hindrance tariffs are the hindrance what is the hindrance import export procedures are hindrance so therefore when you are adopting common procedures common policies and reduce tariff barriers you are establishing a common market and what is the benefit earlier there used to be two kinds of market domestic market and export market but now what you are doing you are merging the export market into the domestic market if I am Germany then France was my export market but now instead of it being an export market we are achieving this commonality so that my market and their market they are together and we are a common market right so therefore this is how this common market is what is the, there will be huge economic benefits of this European economic community then around this same very time they established a small organization iske baare mein zyada detail janne ki zarurat hai nahi Euratom for civil nuclear cooperation so they want to harness the positives of the nuclear technology for civilian purposes for electricity generation etc etc so therefore this is how your euro atom is coming into picture now these things they give you great benefits after this point number five comes in the agriculture sector they also adopt common agriculture policy CAP this comes in the year 1962 year is not important क्या ट्रेंड ट्रेंड हमें निकालना हमें ये नहीं याद रखना 1950 और 1914 नहीं हमें देखना है कि ट्रेंड क्या चल रहा है ट्रेंड ये चल रहा है स्मॉल बिगिनिंग्स विद ओएसी देन कोल एंड स्टील सेक्टर देन रेस्ट ऑफ़ द सेक्टर्स देन ऑफ़ इंडस्ट्री सो ईसीएससी ईसी दे आर अबाउट इंडस्ट्री एग्रीकल्चर थ्रू कॉ कि भी हमारा बहुत सारा खर्चा हो रहा है इन सब चीजों में ब्यूरोक्रेसी है ना ईसीएससी की एक ब्यूरोक्रेसी इन सब की एक ब्यूरोक्रेसी है राइट सो देयरफॉर व्हाट डू दे डू दे एस्टैब्लिश अ यूरोपियन कम्युनिटी इन द ईयर 1967 एंड व्हाट इज दिस दिस इज बेसिकली मर्जर ऑफ ईसीएससी प्लस ईईसी प्लस यूरोट सो दैट देयर इज कॉमन ब्यूरोक्रेसी एट in your UPSC answers you will say that consolidation happened different structures were created now they were consolidated into one simple why to spend extra money on this bureaucracy that bureaucracy let us have a coordinated approach multi-pronged approach through this coordination now this European economic community was not just a step towards economic unity it was also a step towards political unity how this European economic community it also established European Parliament but at that point of time powers with the European Parliament were not much and European Parliament mean nomination ke through selection hota tha. Hai? so therefore these things are improving after that another significant event which takes place is that in the year 1979 it is decided that there will be direct elections to the European Parliament So always remember good economics is good politics this European unity it has delivered economic results so therefore now they are confident to move towards political unity in form of a European Parliament and they are strengthening the Parliament by having these direct elections 
So like your political parties, they fight in the domestic elections, they will fight in the elections to the European Parliament also, right? So therefore, this is how your things are being established, okay? Then after this, what happens? After this is your ERM. Around the time of 1979 only, years are not important, another development takes place. Now they are moving towards monetary unity, okay? A step towards monetary unity. So different kind of unities, step to monetary unity. This happens through ERM, exchange rate mechanism. This is called ERM. Now what is this ERM? Exchange rate mechanism means that if tomorrow we need to have a single currency, then there needs to be a transition period during which our currency will move in tandem. They will not fluctuate too much. They will not be at variance with each other too much. So therefore, what is it? Let four currencies, five currencies move together. In a band, they are moving. Ultimately, consolidation will take place. Experience has told us that in a free market economy, our currencies, they do not vary too much. And therefore, by having a single currency, will be, it will not be a problem. Our economy will be able to deal with a single currency. Right? So it is a step towards, well, I am not an economist, but jitna samaj mein hai, wo yehi hai. Exchange rate mechanism mein kya hai? Exchange rate mechanism mein, the currencies, they will be fluctuating in tandem with each other. They will not be huge amount of variance. Right? So that is the goal of ERM. Preparing ground for common euro. एक और इससे फायदा है मतलब जितना UPSC पढ़ाई करी उससे क्या समझ में आता हमें? So when currency gets devaluated, you say currency got devaluated. So therefore the Indian exports are rising. Indian exporters are benefiting because of Indian rupee devaluating. Right? As a result, what is there? Some other countries exports they will be hurt because of the currency movement. So therefore, if you are part of the common market. Then your currencies they should move together. As a new owner here that Germany has devaluated its currency so much that its exports are benefiting, whereas the French exports are hurt because its currency is higher valued, right? So therefore, that angle it is also there. Import export angle it is also there. You can use your knowledge of economics in this particular domain, right? So therefore, this is how things are progressing. ERM, right? After your ERM, what happens? Around the time of 1991. They sign Maastricht Treaty. इसकी spelling देख लेना यार क्या है Maastricht? Just <coughs> let me check Treaty of Maastricht. Just one second. Google पे search करते हैं Maastricht. Maastricht. M A S Maastricht Treaty. Okay. So therefore, as per this treaty, what happens? As per this treaty, your this thing is being established. Just one second. A decision is being arrived that we are going to have a European Union. Thank you for establishment of European Union, EU. Okay, and for establishment of European Union, this Maastricht Treaty is arrived, and finally, in the year 1993, European Union it is established. Okay, now. इसमें दो तीन चीजें आ जाती हैं फर्स्ट तो स्ट्रक्चर आ जाता है 
तो अगर हम स्ट्रक्चर की बात करें तो बेसिकली यूरोपियन यूनियन इट इज एक्टिंग लाइक अ कंट्री तो इसका एक पार्लियामेंट है इसका एक एग्जीक्यूटिव है इसका एक मतलब लेजिस्लेचर है एग्जीक्यूटिव है इस तरीके से चीजें चल रही हैं इसका एक ऑडिटर भी है इसका एक जुडिशियरी भी है दिस आज योर थिंग्स आर प्रोग्रेसिंग सो बेसिकली इसमें क्या क्या है स्ट्रक्चर अगर देखा जाए तो फर्स्ट स्ट्रक्चर इट इज योर यूरोपियन पार्लियामेंट अगर हम लेजिस्लेचर की बात करें सो so, लेजिस्लेचर में एक लोकसभा है दैट इज जिसको आप लोअर हाउस बोलेंगे एक राज्यसभा टाइप भी है जिसको अपर हाउस बोलेंगे लोकसभा क्या है इसका नाम है यूरोपियन पार्लियामेंट राज्यसभा क्या है राज्यसभा को आप बॉल बोलेंगे काउंसिल ऑफ यूरोप काउंसिल ऑफ यूरोपियन यूनियन काउंसिल ऑफ ईयू ठीक है सो दैट इज योर राज्यसभा दैट इज योर लोकसभा इन द लोकसभा डायरेक्ट इलेक्शन आर देयर विच आर देयर सिंस द टाइम ऑफ नाइनटीन Right? So therefore, there will be members of the parliament. Seats will be allocated to different members, and therefore, through free and fair election, popular elections, these seats they will be populated. Right? Similarly, our Council of Europe it will be having representatives. It will be having ministers. It will be having ministers of member nations. It will be having ministers of member nations, so they can nominate. Just copy nominate. Can I? As far as your executive is concerned, executive book ko bola gaya aapka EC European Commission. What is European Commission? European Commission ka structure aise hai. Sabse pehle upar there is President of European Commission, and the President of European Commission. Then there are these twenty seven commissioners. and this president of european commission it is, he is the 28th commissioner theek okay. hai so basically overall this equal to 28 commissioners and one from them becomes the president and these 28 commissioners they are chosen by a group of head of states a group of head of states of members मेंबर नेशन ठीक है सो प्राइम मिनिस्टर प्रेजिडेंट वगैरह सारे मिलके दे चूज देयर रिस्पेक्टिव दे चूज देयर दे चूज द प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ योर यूरोपियन कमीशन दे चूज द कमिश्नर्स एंड दे चूज द प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ द यूरोपियन कमीशन तो इस तरीके से ये चीज रहती है ठीक है मतलब बहुत ज्यादा डिटेल में जाने की जरूरत नहीं है सिंपली इसको ऐसे देख सकते हैं ठीक है दे आर चूजन बाय ग्रुप ऑफ हेड ऑफ स्टेट ऑफ मेंबर नेशन ठीक है तो इस तरीके से रहता है और एक Plus, so these twenty-eight commissioners they are chosen by the group of head of states of member nation. This group of head of nation it is also known as or European Council. So, ठीक है थोड़ा सा मतलब confusing हो जाता है, but अब क्या करें मतलब ठीक है आपको रट्टा मारने की जरूरत नहीं है आप ये लिख दो simple. ठीक है plus president of the EC it is also chosen by them. ठीक है twenty-eight commissioners and president. They are chosen by them. So therefore, इस तरीके से एक legislature है, एक executive है, judiciary भी है. right so therefore there is this court of justice ek auditor hai ek cag bhi hai that is called your court of auditors what is the crux crux of the matter is ye structure important nahi hai important kya cheez hai important cheeze hai first of all aapka baat aa jati hai ki how to become member of european union How to become a member of the European Union? So there are the, the criteria. 
इट इज नोन एज मैस्टिस्ट क्राइटेरिया ठीक है सो देर फॉर इसके अंदर क्या होना चाहिए कुछ कुछ पॉलिटिकल एलिमेंट्स होने चाहिए पॉलिटिकल एलिमेंट्स क्या आपकी कंट्री में प्रॉपर डेमोक्रेसी शुड बी देयर देर शुड बी रूल ऑफ लॉ दे शुड बी प्रोटेक्शन टू माइनॉरिटीज राइट सो दीज सर्टेन डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ क्राइटेरिया हैव बीन फॉर्म्ड अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट सर्टेन इकोनॉमिक क्राइटेरिया शुड ऑल्सो बी देयर राइट सो देर फॉर योर इकोनॉमी शुड बी स्टेबल इकोनॉमी ओके देर शुड बी फ्री मार्केट इकोनॉमी Your economy should not collapse once it joins the common market. Your competitive, your economy should be competitive enough. Your industry should be competitive enough so that it is able to survive the pressure. It is able to survive the competition, which will be there in the common market. So such kind of criteria are there through which you can be become member of the European Union. Okay. So therefore, is तरीके से चीजें चल रही हैं. Later on. अ ग्रुप नोन एज शेंजन ग्रुप यूरोजोन ये सब चीजें भी आती हैं। सो फॉर एग्जांपल एक आ जाता है शेंजन ग्रुप शेंजन ग्रुप इट वाज एस्टैब्लिश इन द ईयर 1995। ये क्या है बेसिकली इट अलाउज फॉर शेंजन वीजा यू नीड टू टेक ओनली वन वीजा सो इफ यू वांट टू गो टू फ्रांस इफ यू वांट टू गो टू जर्मनी देर इज सिंगल वीजा राइट प्लस इफ यू आर ट्रेवलिंग फ्रॉम फ्रांस टू जर्मनी यू डो नॉट रिक्वायर एनीथिंग दे आर नो इमिग्रेशन कंट्रोल राइट सो देर इसको सिंपली हम बोल सकते हैं कॉमन वीजा पॉलिसी कॉमन वीजा फॉर मेंबर्स ठीक है सेकेंड एस्पेक्ट क्या है इसका नो इमिग्रेशन कंट्रोल्स बिटवीन द मेंबर्स सो देर फॉर व्हाट इज द नेट रिजल्ट ग्रेटर फ्रीडम ऑफ मूवमेंट ऑफ द पीपल right so therefore this is how you are trying to achieve this shenzhen group it will contribute to your political unity it will increase the people to people contact right after that came your eurozone in the year 1999 so therefore basically the countries who join the eurozone they will give up their currency and they will adopt euro as the currency of their country they will also lose the control over the monetary policy the monetary policy control will be in the hands of the european central bank okay which is part of the european union so it also has a bank apart from judiciary etc there is a rbi also what is your rbi your rbi it is known as ecb european central bank right so therefore eurozone monetary policy will be under ecb so you have achieved monetary unity right so monetary policy will be under your european central bank ecb okay and apart from that you are going to lose your monetary policy you are going to have euro as your currency so your own currency will not be there euro will be the currency so therefore you can become a member of european union but you can not be a member of eurozone as aap decide kar sakte ho ki bhaiya we don't want to be part of the eurozone we but we want to be part of european union example example is britain okay so therefore such kind of flexibility it is also available right so this is how so this is you can note down on the european union then we will discuss the case of brexit a little bit of historical perspective on brexit 5 10 minute lagenge usme sabse pehle left pe kar dijiye
now let us deal with the now let us deal with the question of why did the britishers what was the situation of the british with respect to the european unity with respect to the european unity the situation was that the britishers they wanted europe to come together but they wanted to have just a special relationship with europe they did not want to get submerged in europe the reason for that were multifolds first of all britishers they thought that after the world war 2 within europe we are the number one power okay at least within the western europe we are the number one power okay second thing this so therefore they thought that if we submit to the european union therefore we do not need the european union that much or we do not need the european economic community 1957 that much or we do not need the european coal and steel community that much right so therefore that was the situation second aspect was the britishers they thought that they have a special relationship with britain Uh, sorry the british has thought that they have a special relationship with the united states of america and if they become part of the european unity project then soon this economic community can can get transitioned into a political unity and therefore the european union might get control of the foreign policy of its member nations and the britishers they will lose control of the foreign policy so therefore traditionally being a super power traditionally being a geopolitical power the britishers they, did, they were afraid that becoming part of the european unit unity project it will result in lack of independence in foreign policy and they wanted to maintain a special relationship with the united states of america so they thought that we have a special place we will have a special relationship with european you know unified western europe will have special relationship with us that was the second point that is they wanted to maintain freedom in foreign policy third thing was that the british as they were fine with the european your coordination economic coordination but they hated loss of sovereignty so they thought that gradually the institutions of the european economic community they will try to dominate the policies having lower tariffs is a separate matter but why should there be joint economic policy making that is why the britishers they neither joined the european coal and steel community and they also did not join the european economic community because they said that we are a sovereign power how can we submit our sovereignty to this supranational organization european coal and steel community or european economic community or later european community etc right so therefore this concern for sovereignty was there so it is because of these factors that initially the britishers they did not become part of the project of european unity okay so therefore if we try to enlist why there was resistance by the britishers so what do we see first of all they did not join european coal and steel community of 1951 they also did not join the european economic community of 1957 what is the concern reason so first reason they did not want to submit their sovereignty so therefore concerns for losing or concerns regarding if we become part of the european unity 
how will we be able to offer better economic tariffs to the us because then our number one preferential preferential trade partners they become the members of the western europe so therefore becoming part of european union will mean our special relationship is with western europe and the relationship with the us becomes number 2 second fiddle so therefore we do not want that us is the number one power we want to be strongly aligned with the us there was also a economic miscalculation what was the economic miscalculation the britishers had a unique thing with them which is known as the commonwealth and the commonwealth it represented the newly independent nations it represented india and other countries of the south and these countries they had huge amount of population they also had huge amount of resources so therefore the britishers thought that if they establish a special relationship with the western european countries they will not be able to have special relationship with british commonwealth okay because when once you become part of the common market once you become part of the european economic community you have to give number one preference to the members of the western europe and you have to apply high tariffs for the non members that is the britishers would have had to apply higher tariffs to the indian products which are trying to enter britain so why india will allow preferential access to the british products which are trying to enter india so therefore they thought that if i am doing a economic calculation on one side i have this british commonwealth huge amount of population therefore huge amount of market huge amount of buying power probably and on other side i have this western europe relatively lower population less number of buyers so therefore where will my exports will be better the britishers did a miscalculation and they thought that the commonwealth will be able to act as a better market for the british exports so therefore that is why for ensuring the special relationship with the commonwealth countries the britishers they did not join the european unity project they thought that they have captured a good export market in the form of commonwealth but the problem was why it was a miscalculation hum gareeb the hamari jeb mein paisa nahi tha we did not have enough money so therefore because of colonialism the economies of the members of the commonwealth they did not grow very rapidly after independence and as a result we failed to provide a great export market for the british exports the net result was the british exports they grew less faster as compared to the members of the european coal and steel community and the members of the european economic community so therefore that was the miscalculation so but this did not happen so therefore from the time period of 1961 the britishers realized ki are bhaiya to galti ho gayi so from 1961 onwards the britishers they wanted to be part of european community or european economic community right which had been established in 1957 but now the french they did not allow the britishers to enter why did the french did not allow the britishers to enter the french they did not allow the britishers to enter because they thought that entry of britain entry of britain into the european economic community will bring the us influence in the affairs of europe us through britain will try to further its agenda economic agenda political agenda etc point number 
second issue is that there was some amount of france versus us rivalry around this period of time why because us had provided nuclear weapons or nuclear missiles like solaris missiles you know these kind of missiles they were provided to britain but same were not offered to france so therefore the french felt that the us they are trying to strengthen britain over france that is why around the time of 1966 the french they also exited nato they ultimately joined nato around the time of 2008 or something so there was some amount of france versus us rivalry and the french they did not want the us influence to be there and they thought that britishers they will bring the us influence into the affairs of europe that became the first point the point number one what was the second point second point is that the britishers they used to provide huge amount of subsidy to their farmers so therefore the french thought that if we allow the britishers to become part of the european economic community then the british subsidized goods agrarian goods they will hurt the french farmers because once you have become part of european economic community then france cannot apply any tariffs to the british agrarian goods also okay so therefore that became the second reason so because of these aspects plus otherwise also the british economy was not doing that great as compared to the rest of the european economy now because the european economic community and the european coal and steel community they have boosted the economy of france and the rest of the members so therefore they thought that by adding a member whose economy is not doing that great will weaken the overall economy of the members of the european economic community right so therefore because of plus lastly there was a person called charles de gaulle so mr charles de gaulle he was the uh, president of the france since 1958 till your 1969 and he was a nationalist actually he was the war veteran of the world war 2 and his personality was more nationalist and he was more anti british so therefore he blocked so it was your charles de gaulle his personality also played a role finally when in 1969 mr charles de gaulle is removed from power basically he exits he is no more in power after 1969 after that finally the new government it loosens its stand and finally 1973 the britishers they enter the european community because european economic community has converted into european community in 1967 the name of the paris airport is also charles de gaulle airport cdg right so therefore finally 
they are able to enter when your Charles de Gaulle Therefore, the French blockade, it is lifted. But now what happens? Elections happen. So, they, the Britishers, they join. Britishers, they join the European community. But then elections happen. When elections happen, the Labour Party comes to power. The Labour Party is confused whether we made the right choice by entering the European community or not. So, therefore, now they go to a referendum. So, your referendum hua hai abhi 2016 mein, ye pehle bhi hua tha. Kab hua tha? 1974. So therefore, 1973, the Britishers, they join EC. But then, cold feet and then referendum. So therefore, there was a referendum. Ye referendum pehli baar bhi hai. Tab bhi hua tha. Same concerns were there. Sovereignty. Aaj ke time pe kya concerns hai Britishers ke? The number one concern is sovereignty. The people of Britain, they feel that we choose our member of parliament. But when we go to our member of parliament, our member of parliament says, I am powerless. Why? Because this is the law of European parliament. And because Britain is a part of European Union, the Britain has to follow that law. So therefore, sorry, I cannot help you. This has become a concern. So what is the second concern? Second concern is why Britain is paying huge amount of money as contribution to European Union budget. These are the concerns because of which this Brexit has taken place. Right? So therefore, this is the story of your Britain. And finally, the Britain, it did become part of your this thing. But same concern, they continue. For example, the Britishers, they joined the ERM. Initially, they did not join. But later on they joined, so they joined the ERM with a delay. Again we see there is a concern, like exchange rate mechanism. After that the Britishers, they did not join. They did not join the Eurozone because they did not want to lose control over the monetary policy. They did not join the ERM because that would have also mean, meant loss of partial control of the monetary policy because your currency has to move in tandem. So therefore, this concern is not new. This concern was there since the time of your 1951 and it has again manifested itself in your 2016 referendum which is being implemented and finally now it will be implemented and the Britishers, they will exit the European Union. Right? So therefore, this is the story of your Britain. So you may please note it down. After this we will take up, we will take up decolonization. So let us take a small 5 minutes break. So, because we are going to begin a new topic, so let us take a small 5 minutes break. Meanwhile, you can note this down, right, and after that we will begin decolonization.
okay so the next part that we have is decolonization okay so if we look at the decolonization decolonization it began after the world war 2 there were certain reasons for decolonization after the world war 2 the european power was at a decline right and as a result it would became very tough for the european powers to maintain their colonies right because because of the two world wars their economies they were devastated right so and also their factor was there that by this point of time the nationalist movements of the colonies in many of the colonies there was a nationalist movement for example in india there was a nationalist movement since the time of 1885 in dutch east indies that is your indonesia there was also a nationalist movement around the time of 1920s to 30s Vietnam also there was a nationalist movement around the time of 1920s so therefore the nationalist movement it had matured over a period of time as a result gradually there was this pressure of decolonization and what do we see India became like one of the first major countries to be decolonized in the year 1947 right so this is how gradually your decolonization began but there are certain trends in the decolonization let us look at those trends So that is the first point which I mentioned the decline of European economies because of two world wars therefore they cannot bear they cannot bear the cost of suppressing the national movements what are the cost of suppressing the national movement you would have to deploy your army right you might have to fight guerrilla warfare where the Indian national like Indian national movement it was a peaceful movement it was led by Mahatma Gandhi but otherwise in other countries they were in many of the cases the Indian uh, the national movement it was led by the communists and the communists they believe in violent revolution so therefore they engaged in guerrilla warfare and therefore fighting a guerrilla warfare will be economically tough you would have to deploy a military for long periods of time and deployment of military will result in escalated costs so therefore it became costly for suppressing the nationalist movements which in some cases were guerrilla warfare. Right? For example, in Indochina, Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia, the Viet Minh, they were communist and they had launched a guerrilla warfare against the French colonial power. Right? So therefore, this was one of the reasons for decolonization. Overall, decolonization will happen beginning from 1946-47 and it will then take a break of 10 years till 1957. Then again, many of the countries, they get decolonized in 1960s. So overall, what are the reasons? pressure of the United States, USSR and the United Nations. Why there was a pressure of United States? First of all, you can mention that United States was the country which had fought, fought the first or one of the major anti-colonial struggle during the American Revolution. So ideologically, the United States will be a little sympathetic towards the national movements of the colonies. That can be point number one. Second point can you mention that with respect to the United States, United States was also a businessman, right? 
now when you have a colony then you have a special economic relationship with that colony if india was a colony of britain if indo china was a colony of france right if your african colonies were colonies of different nations then they the colonial power it has a special relationship economic relationship with the colony it is the companies of the colonial power that will be kept getting special assignments special tenders etc etc and therefore there will be high tariff and non tariff barriers against the us exports so therefore will it not be economically beneficial for the us if there is decolonization because then the us exports they find they can find an easy entry into the markets of the colonies right so therefore if decolonization happen then the special control of the colonial power on the economy of colony goes away the special economic relationship between the colonial power and the colony goes away and now the us exports they can enter into the markets of the colonies erstwhile colonies so therefore it has a economic angle also third part in many of the cases the nationalist struggles they were led by guerrilla warfare they were led by communists for example in angola mozambique communists were active in dutch east indies communists were active sukarno was a communist leader sukarno like subhash chandra bose had sided with the japanese so as to defeat the uh, so as to defeat the colonial powers the dutch right similarly in uh, your indo china viet minh the organization of ho chi minh it was a communist organization so somehow it had happened that in many of the cases the nationalist movements they were led by the communist and it is not a coincidence the reason is communism it talks about anti imperialism lenin had said that colonialism and imperialism they are a result of capitalism there is desire for colonies because of attraction of raw material and export markets and therefore it is capitalism because of which colonialism has taken place that makes capitalism and colonialism friends and communism and anti colonialism friends and that is why inspired by the communist ideology these people in many of the circumstances the communist leaders they were leading the nationalist struggles another factor is communism it talks about the welfare of the poor and therefore many of the people the masses in the colonies they were poor so therefore the desire became that we should become independent and after that we should uplift the masses who are poor and we will uplift that by will uplift them by using the ideology of communism or socialism right so therefore that became the reason so in this sense what happened is that the united states of america it became a little concerned that if we suppress the if the capitalist nations if they suppress the nationalist struggles for independence for too long then first of all because they are struggling right to independence to hame shayad ek na ek din dena hi pade but our relationship will go so bad that after independence this country will become member of communist alliance will become anti us so therefore isse pehle ki situation bahut zyada kharab ho do not become such a big enemy of these people that they join the communist camp so therefore this cold war also assisted in tactical decision of the us that we should now allow them to become independent okay now this thing for example it manifested in the form of namibia so south africa was preventing namibia from getting independence but in your 1980s finally the united states of america it told south africa that withdraw from namibia right otherwise the namibians they will become too much of a part of your communist camp okay so therefore third reason is
therefore either support their cause of independence so us will give a statement we support decolonization of the african colonies so that after decolonization there are good relationships between the us and them right now what was the angle of the ussr so first angle becomes the ideology their ideology for favors decolonization they are not in favor of imperialism they say that workers all all the workers of the world should unite proletariat of the world unite that was the slogan of karl marx so the ideology of communism says that all men are brothers that is all workers they are brothers right so therefore they they think that these borders they are artificial ultimately the whole world is divided into capitalist class peasant class or your working class so therefore irrespective of you are a japanese worker or a russian worker or a indian worker you are a worker and therefore there needs to be global unity among the workers so therefore how can there be operation so if there needs to be equality there needs to be equality between nations also we are not just talking about equality in our domestic society there should be equality in the world so the ideology of equality the ideology of internationalism that necessitated anti imperialistic ideology and as mentioned in the earlier part of the discussion they say that colonialism is a product of capitalism this was said by lenin right so therefore that's the ideology of the ussr another practical aspect is there if the ussr is able to support the nationalist movements then chances are that after independence these countries they will join the communist camp right and these countries might also end up adopting communism for example adopt angola adopted communism um tanzania adopted communism right so therefore there are chances that these countries they will become communist countries and if they do not become communist country if they still adopt multi party democracy they will be friends of ussr right so therefore it is also in their national interest right united nation the united nation charter it talks about freedom liberty so obviously it has taken a high moral position so obviously the united nation will be in the favor of decolonization right so that's very very natural because united nation charter it talked about liberty of the individual so therefore there was a huge amount of pressure on the colonial powers that you should decolonize so ye reasons bane for decolonization another reason for decolonization was desire for neo colonialism desire for neo colonialism i mean maybe a bad example but if i if you try to relate it with our normal life imagine there is a girlfriend and boyfriend right so imagine there is there is a girlfriend boyfriend couple is there and their relationship it is not going well right that relationship is going sore imagine the girl is saying that i want to get out of the relationship but the divana divana kehta hai matlab jo divana hai aapka theek hai wo keh raha hai the boyfriend is saying sorry i will not allow you to exit the relationship boyfriend is sitting outside the home you know smoking sutta you know 
कि यू नो कब नीचे आएगी बॉयफ्रेंड इज मेकिंग हंड्रेड कॉल्स टू फिफ्टी कॉल्स थ्री हंड्रेड कॉल्स गर्लफ्रेंड इज कटिंग 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 दैट ब्लॉकिंग यू नो दीज थिंग्स आर गोइंग ऑन राइट सो अल्टीमेटली वॉट हैपन्स अल्टीमेटली द गर्ल विल रिवोल्ट एंड द गर्ल विल से गेट लॉस्ट एंड मे बी द गर्ल विल कम विद अनदर बॉयफ्रेंड यू नो कि अच्छा ये ले ये रहा राइट द रिलेशनशिप विल बी परमानेंटली ब्रोकन आफ्टर दैट देर विल बी नो कॉल्स बिटवीन द एक्स बॉयफ्रेंड एंड द एक्स गर्लफ्रेंड बट देन देर इज सेकेंड मॉडल in the second model the boyfriend is chalu chalu means clever so in the second model when the when the thing starts going bad then the boyfriend adopts a threshold approach that till a point of threshold i will try to convince her but after that i will say that okay okay dear okay baby i want your happiness right so therefore you are free to go what will be the result the result will be that at least the two they will remain friends you know and the girl will say yes we can remain friends the boy will say yes we can remain friends so we are not girlfriend boyfriend now we are simply friends the calls and messages they will continue right so therefore there will be some sort of relationship with the girl even after breakup and because of the common history and because of amicable divorce of boyfriend and girlfriend there might be some good relationship between the ex girlfriend and the ex boyfriend there might be still some special relationship और अगर कभी मौका मिला कंधा बनने का ठीक है तनु वेट मनु अगर आपने देखी है सो जस्ट इन केस इफ द बॉयफ्रेंड गेट्स यू नो इफ द गर्ल इज इन ट्रबल यू नो शी कॉल्स द बॉयफ्रेंड इज लाइक यू नो कोई नहीं आई एम देयर फॉर यू यू नो एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा अगेन यू नो चांसेस ऑफ पैचअप आर देयर चांसेस ऑफ फर्दर स्पेशल रिलेशनशिप आर देयर दैट इज द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन कोलोनियलिज्म इंपेरियलिज्म एंड न्यू कोलोनियलिज्म सो द ब्रिटिशर्स दे थॉट they were clever right rest of them they were not france right your uh, france then your uh, portugal they were like the first boyfriend britain was like the second boyfriend they were clever they they adopted an approach that they will try to resist independence till a threshold but after that they will not resist it because they did not want to sour the relationship between the erstwhile colony and the britain to such an extent that the people of the colony they hate britain so therefore they adopted the threshold approach and when the nationalist struggles of these colonies they reached a threshold the britishers they exited and they exited with a promise that see after decolonization you will we will remain friends welcome to commonwealth we will have special economic relationship you are independent we are independent let us me welcome you to commonwealth please remain part of commonwealth and therefore through commonwealth the britishers they wanted to continue the special economic relationship obviously the british industries they are much more efficient compared to the indian industries or compared to the industries of other commonwealth nations like you know your, your african nations etc kenya etc all of them so therefore the british businesses they will continue to benefit but albeit in a informal manner without that formal force present without the sovereignty of british present so therefore this is how we can say that the britishers they were responsible decolonizers they were more clever and therefore they adopted a threshold approach so as to continue neo colonialism after colonialism
Colony powers, especially Britain, wanted to continue benefits of colonialism via new colonialism. Therefore, it, it, they adopted threshold approach where they resisted decolonization up to a point but then exited so as to maintain special relationship post-independence via tool of commonwealth. Why tool of commonwealth, why tool of aid and loans, okay, you have to pay British money, but in return please allow the British company to operate. Why tool of trade and investment agreements, that is special economic relationship. So therefore these are the reasons because of which decolonization took place. One more reason is, what is another reason? The exposure given to the soldiers during the World War II. So many of the African soldiers, they fought for the Britishers, they fought for the French during the World War II. And during the World War II, they were able to defeat the European powers. Plus, they were told that you are fighting this war for liberation. You are fighting this war for independence. You are fighting this war against totalitarianism of Axis powers. So therefore, this exposure, it resulted in rise of nationalism among the soldiers of Africa, among the soldiers of India, ki achha, tumhara liberation, liberation, what about our liberation, right? So therefore, the exposure given to the soldiers, that resulted in rise of nationalism among the soldiers. That why are you fighting for the liberation of just them, but why not our liberation? Therefore, tough for colony power to maintain control over colonies. Another aspect you can mention that wherever there was guerrilla warfare, so there the freedom struggle became was trended because of aid given by the USSR, arms and ammunition given by USSR. Why? Obviously, because colonies are of capitalist nations. So therefore, it is strategically beneficial for the USSR that the capitalist nation, they lose their colonies. Their economy will be hurt and otherwise also their geostrategic strength will also be hurt. So therefore these are the different reasons because of which a core reason is western education. So in many of the cases especially in case of France, in case of Britain, they followed the policy of colonialism with the intent of white man's burden. Kaise? Our politics is stronger than your politics. Look at our politics. Our politics is based on ideas of enlightenment. Your politics, it is based on feudalism. You have Rajas, Monarchs, etc. You have no idea of what a modern nation is. Look at the enlightenment thinkers. Therefore, study. We are here to civilize you, okay? okay? Dogs and Indians are not allowed in the restaurant. You are dogs. 
you are from an inferior civilization, you are blacks, you are from an inferior race, we are here to civilize you. Hum tumhe ya civilize karne aare hai, read English literature, read about English politics. Ye dekho, ye padho, ye chapter democracy pe, Dem do you know what is democracy? Have you any idea? No, you are feudal in mind, your mindset is feudal. You don't know what are modern thoughts, you don't know what Locke has said, you, not, you don't know what Harrington had said. Right? So therefore, read these ideas. So therefore, study about the Western education, okay? study the Western political thought, study about liberty, democracy, self-rule, idea of self-determination, what is a nation, nation is summation of people who feel one, all of these things. Study about our economics. We are a superior civilization. Look what we have done. We have done industrialization and that is why because you are from an inferior civilization, tabhi aap So study about the economic system, study about capitalism. Ye hota hai. But this is a negative effect, hua, counter effect, hua. counter effect ye hua that initially to hai. you became superior in the minds of the people from colonies. Ye chongrej a gaya, babu a gaya, babu. But over a period of time with the help of the western education, the very same people, they started thinking the western educated leaders, western educated youth, they became leaders of the freedom struggles and they started thinking that what about our, our self rule. So they started demanding self rule, they started demanding democracy. They started demanding sovereignty. So therefore, Western education played a role in India, it played a role in Africa and in many of the cases, the freedom struggles they were led by the Western educated leaders. Western education led to rise of modern nationalism among the colonies who debarded independence, self-rule, democracy, anti-colonialism. Plus, economic critique of colonialism was also prepared, example in India, drain theory given by Dadabhai Naroji and the other moderates. Therefore, colonies now intellectually challenged colonialism and many Western educated leaders led freedom struggles in different places. So therefore, overall because of these factors we can say that your these, because of these factors, we can say that your decolonization, it happened, right. So therefore, this is, you can note it down. These are the reasons for decolonization.
अब थोड़ा सा लेफ्ट साइड पे दिखा दो फिर बस डिलीट करेंगे और लेफ्ट करो बस ठीक राइट साइड भी दिखा दो बस Now there are certain broad trends in decolonization. What were these trends? एक तो trend ये था First trend was that Britain they were they were more clever. They followed a threshold approach जो हमने लिख लिया है Second aspect was that uh, many of the colonial powers they tried for neocolonialism. कॉलोनियलिज्म वो भी हमने लिख लिया है third trend we can mention that uh, Euro, uh, that britain was a responsible decolonizer what do you mean by britain being a responsible decolonizer in many of the cases what happened is that the britishers they did not give abrupt independence 
So during the time of colonialism, there was policy of divide and rule as a result of which huge amount of tribal rivalries were there in many of the African countries. The Britishers, they followed a step by step approach. First of all, what they will do, they will wait for a threshold. When that threshold is reached, they will not immediately give independence. First of all, they will prepare the country for independent rule by bringing local self-government. So therefore, the country will remain a colony of Britain, but British parliament will bring an act which will allow for participation of the local leaders in running the local government. For a period of 5 years, 7 years, 8 years, these leaders, they will gain experience in governance that how to run finance ministry, how to run defense ministry, I mean, defense to catch Britain ke baas rahega. how to run finance ministry, how to run agriculture ministry, how to run human resource development ministry, education ministry, etc, etc. And therefore, once the Britishers feel that now there is a political stability, now there is some political party which commands the, uh, the votes of the people, that means there will be political stability. Second, if the Britishers feel that now these people, they have experience in running the government, there will not be sudden collapse. They know how to run administration. That now there are decent number of people in bureaucracy. So therefore, after preparing them for independence, now they will exit the country. So in this sense, the Britishers were responsible decolonizers. Who are the irresponsible decolonizers? Mad people like Portugal. What did they do? They resisted till the very end. They fought, they killed millions of people in the freedom struggle. The communist guerrillas, they will fight against Portuguese forces in Angola and Mozambique. Ultimately, when they have been defeated militarily, when the Portugals have been defeated militarily by the nationalist communists, then suddenly one day, the Portugal will say that, okay, we are exiting. And even while exiting, they will destroy roads, they will destroy bridges, they will destroy, if any schools they have made, they will destroy the infrastructure. They want to punish the colonial people for their freedom struggle, that kind of mentality. So therefore, when they suddenly, when these people, they suddenly exited, then look at the situation because of absentee colonialism. Okay, in certain cases, there was absentee colonialism, meaning the colonial power did, was not present. It did not establish schools. It did not establish proper infrastructure, etc., etc., social infrastructure especially. So therefore, suddenly when you have made these people independent, these people, they have no experience of governance. There are no skilled manpower to run the industries as such. There are no capitalists to manage the industry. There are no educated people to become bureaucrats. There are no educated people to become teachers, doctors, engineers. So therefore, this is a situation. On the other side, you have high hope from the people of the colony that once we will get independence, our dreams will be fulfilled. Our lives will suddenly improve after independence. They had made the colonial power the villain of or the reason for all misery. Independence comes, but ability is not there with the newly formed governments to run the government. Not enough bureaucrats are there, not enough doctors are there, engineers are not there. And at the same time, there are high hopes from them. Obviously, these people, plus economy is also devastated because of colonialism. So these people, the newly independent governments, the newly uh, formed democratic governments, they will fail to meet the aspirations of the people. In Africa, I'm talking about. And what will happen then? The people, they will now suddenly become disenchanted with the government. Ki yaar, chodo yaar. Aise hi. Humne to socha tha, independence mil jayegi, pata nahi kya ho jayega. Maza nahi hai yaar. But, but, is type se ho gaya. What will now happen? The old tribal rivalries will come back. Now, tribes, because Africa had so many tribes. So like in India, you have castes. Africa, it has tribes. So old colonial rivalries will come back. Right? So good economics is good politics. When economics is bad, the politics also becomes extremist, sectarian. Then there will be a series of coup d'etats, counter coup d'etats, that tribe taking over power by force, that tribe murdering that tribe, etc, etc. Africa will go into chaos. So therefore, that was one of the prominent trends. So, Abhishek Kumar Pandey is asking, Sir, why Britishers were allowing people to be educated 
they would have also figured out its consequences because the reason for that was first of all you call it cultural colonialism that is benevolent colonialism that is white man's burden that is a civilizing mission so from the perspective of the britishers the it is said that the i mean different different views are there you know different views are there for example the cambridge school of thought is there of history so basically it is said that the britishers they they knew that one day they would have to go away okay right so therefore and they so many of the britishers they genuinely believed in the white man's burden they genuinely believe believed that we need to do something good for these people that is why in your modern indian history you read about people like lord william bentick who banned sati lord william bentick he um, got researches done into sanskrit scriptures he wanted to give the glory of indian scriptures back to the indian people he said ki right now your religion has the problems of caste system etc etc otherwise your history is great right we are we europeans are studying that history and we are going to give you that glory we are going to remove the social ills so female infanticide was removed similarly was banned similarly your uh, sati was banned right western education was brought so many of them they felt that we are here on a civilizing mission we are here on a civilizing mission for example in the indigo revolt of modern indian history which happened from 1859 to 60 the christian missionaries they supported the indians and they the christian missionaries they criticized the european planters that you are mistreating the indians so many of the britishers they were indeed on a civilizing mission they were indeed generally they they were good people and not all but some of them they were good people and they believed in the white man burden but that we need to bring modern polity modern education to the rest of the world the god has given why why is it that suddenly in britain there is industrial revolution they believed that god has given responsibility to the british people to spread these modern ideas which the britishers have been endowed with by god aisa wo believe karte the theek hai but iska ek practical utility bhi tha practical utility utility is by this thing they are able to reduce the resistance towards colonialism for example in your modern indian history you read that moderates or many of the bengal intellectuals they supported the britishers in the 1857 revolts obviously not by arms or anything but through their writings they are like this is barbarism we are in support with the empire right so therefore ye effect hota hai cultural colonialism ka that you are you are able to co-opt you are able to get the support of the people of the colony in your favor when you are able to prove that you are a superior civilization then many of the people in the colony they will stop resisting you will say yes okay we also want to benefit with you so that's the reason right so this was one trend that britishers they were the responsible decolonizers how so first of all they gave step by step they followed step by step approach and in this step by step approach first of all there will be a threshold they will wait for a threshold once the threshold is reached after that they will give limited self government once the limited self government has been reached after that they will give full independence 
this particular limited self government it will prepare or it will prepare the people for independent rule prepare for this particular thing so therefore during this point of time you will get experience in running the government or you will get governance experience so therefore this is how the britishers they operated and when we look at some of the examples we will come to know about it rest of the people they were reluctant decolonizers right <clears throat> so therefore this is how you can talk about apart from this what were the other trends the other trends we see timely trend we can see so therefore till your 1951 so 1945 to 51 british decolonized then 1951 to 57 the british resisted then 1957 there was a realization that now we must decolonize that now we must decolonize right so therefore that's how in 1957 ghana became the first country to be decolonized in africa right so therefore this is happening another trend which we are seeing is that decolonization it was tougher if you look at africa then decolonization came late where the number of settlers was more so actually as we have seen that uh, in the colonialism of africa where the number of settlers are there where the number of settlers are more then the white settlers who are who have started to live in africa they become the local agent they enter into a special relationship with the colonial power right so for example there is a colony of zimbabwe or there is a colony of kenya or there is a colony of south africa their high number of white settlers are there these white settlers they have captured the economy they have captured the politics the blacks they do not have any right to vote these white settlers they act as agent of the colonial power since the white settlers they control the economy so therefore the relationship it is pretty smooth right they assist the colonial power in getting the colonial benefits trade agreements etc etc theek hai tenders etc etc whereas in return the colonial power it is providing military protection to the white settlers just in case the blacks they try to overthrow the settlers right so therefore wherever the number of white settlers were much more there the independence came late wherever the number of white settlers were less there the independence come easy okay so because with the help of the agents the britishers they could also think that we can continue our control over power also british businessmen they would also lobby that please do not decolonize hamara must setting baitha hua hai economic setting so therefore this is the another trend
So maximum number of settlers they were in Central Africa and South Africa. Okay. So for example, Zimbabwe. This area it is Zimbabwe, etc. East it is your Kenya, etc. West Africa are like Ghana, etc. So therefore we see that there was easy decolonization in West Africa, whereas in the East and Central and South Africa the decolonization came late because here the number of settlers were more. Okay. So this is how your things are progressing. Apart from that, another trend was that when the colonial power because of the external pressure of uh, external pressure of cold war external pressure of us ussr united nation when the colonial power is deciding that is when the britain is deciding that we need to decolonize at that point of time the quid pro quo relationship between the white settlers and the britishers it is ending because now the britishers are saying not just decolonization the britishers are saying that have black majority rule Right? Whereas the white settlers, they do not want black majority rule. They are minority elites. They do not want the black majority rule. So therefore, when the colonial power will tell the white settler that install black majority rule, then the white settlers, they will revolt against the colonial power because now the quid pro quo relationship, it has broken. White settlers resisted black majority rule and when the British pressurized, they broke relationship and declared independence under white minority rule, example Zimbabwe and South Africa in the 1960s and 70s. Another trend was there. What was the trend? Decolonization in those areas where white settlers were there, decolonization became easy when the neighboring countries, they became black majority rule. Then they came under black majority rule. Why? Because now the neighboring countries, they can provide safe havens to the gorillas. So therefore, South Africa is South Africa left. If so, here South Africa is South Africa left, left Namibia, Namibia ke upar Angola. Hai. So when Angola is becoming independent from Portuguese in 1975, this gives a boost to the independence struggle of Namibia from South Africa. When Namibia finally becomes independent, then the people of the black people of South Africa, their chances of getting black majority rule further increases. When South Africa is surrounded by black majority ruled nations, then those nations, they will put economic sanctions on South Africa. Economic pressure will also increase. They will also provide safe havens to the gorillas of African National Congress of South Africa. Right. So therefore, what I'm saying is that it followed a, a domino effect that more the number of as the number of black majority ruled countries increased in Africa, the chances of black majority rule in neighboring countries further increased. That is a trend.
this is a trend which we will see right so when angola is getting independent then the matlab wo slides wagera mein wo main aapko dikha dunga specific jo events wagera hai so this is also a trend right and lastly there is one small trend the britishers they ultimately they wanted to protect the white settlers so whenever the britishers they are giving independence and if the britishers they have a choice between a moderate leader and a radical leader between a western educated leader and a radical leader western educated moderate leader they will transfer power not to the radical leader not to the radical communist leader they will transfer power to the moderate leader why because the moderate leader will promise the britishers that after independence the blacks they will not persecute the whites so similarly when nelson mandela promised to the britishers that i will follow a approach of reconciliation so therefore nelson mandela was chosen similarly in other countries also western educated moderate leaders were chosen so that the there are the protection is there for the property for the life of the white settlers so this was another trend who would not persecute the white settlers and who would not join the communist camp so broadly these are the trends which are there right aur kuch nahi hai isme aur baki to sab aise hi hai faltu so please note this down sabse pehle left se dikha do aap theek hai ek ek minute dikhate chalna time note kar lena
जी एक लास्ट इसमें ट्रेंड है व्हाट इज द ट्रेंड सो एक्चुअली डीकोलोनाइजेशन इन अफ्रीका इट लेड टू नियो कोलोनियलिज्म एंड इट ऑल्सो लेड टू इंक्लूजन ऑफ कोल्ड वॉर सो देर फॉर दो इफेक्ट हुए डीकोलोनाइजेशन के सो पोस्ट डीकोलोनाइजेशन वॉट हैपन टू थिंग्स हैपन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल देर वॉज इंक्रीज इन इंफ्लुएंस और देर वॉज इन इंफ्लुएंस ऑफ कोल्ड वॉर For example, some of the countries they will become communist. Like Angola became communist. Swapo was a communist organization. And second aspect is neo-colonialism. Neo-colonialism it basically meant that the erstwhile colonial power it continued to economically exploit the colony despite decolonization. Why the important aspect is why this neo-colonialism happened. the reason for it is actually pretty simple we have already discussed it when we discuss colonialism in africa so two three factors are there first of all in those countries where absentee colonialism was there there no infrastructure was developed no social infrastructure was developed right so therefore very poor education was there and therefore when for example when congo became independent there were only 17 graduates in congo similarly in mozambique again there was no lawyer in mozambique right so therefore wherever absentee colonialism was there where the white man's burden was also not there there to zero development happened and therefore these people they were unable to run their country on their own so therefore why neo colonialism because in one scenario where that is one part then second aspect is because of colonialism there was uh, second part you can mention the arbitrary borders right so matlab ek aur cheez dusra part bol sakte hain jahan pe where there was abrupt decolonization thirdly you can in general you can mention that because of colonialism the economy was completely devastated theek hai uh aur kya bol sakte hain you can say that arbitrary borders were there in many cases so when there was arbitrary borders therefore the tribal rivalries they reemerged when there was failure of development post independence okay so therefore old tribal rivalries they reemerge next issue is what after why neo colonialism because another aspect is there there was no diversified economy most of these countries they had no diversified economy unke liye kya the britishers wagera baaki sab kya karte they used to simply mine the minerals 
raw material extraction used to take place. So therefore, even after independence, these countries, they continue to mine the minerals and they used to sell their minerals in the export markets. But problem was many of these countries, they became dependent on single export items. So when the market of that single export item will collapse, their economy will also collapse. So if there is one country which is dependent upon export of oil, oil collapsed, their economy collapsed. One country dependent on export of cocoa, cocoa market collapsed, their economy collapsed. Right? So therefore, another reason was that their economy was not diversified. Therefore, if items market crash, therefore it will lead to economic crash. All of it, as a result of this, what happened because of all of these factors, because of these factors, there was economic turmoil. And when there was economic turmoil, these countries, they went back to their old colonial powers. They went to IMF, they went to World Bank and they took loans. They became dependent upon them. IMF and World Bank, they did not just give loan. They said that loans are our investment. So, you don't give skip upper return be there. It has to be development as we want it. So therefore the IMF and the World Bank loans they came with conditionalities. So these countries they wanted to invest that money which they had taken from IMF and World Bank on social infrastructure, on providing free health, free education. IMF and World Bank said no. Free ki chize nahi chalti capitalism. Mein. You have to invest it on industry etc etc. Therefore as a result social inequality it continued and these things continued. So therefore, the real development did not come. So therefore, this is the last feature. You can note this down. Abusi pe camera kar dijiye. Thoda sa upar kar dijiye.
my god now let us take a 8 minutes break we'll meet at 4 so you can also relax and i will also relax after that we will begin the uh, arab israel conflict and we will have a look at it isme jo dekho isme decolonization mein i will be giving you a ppt matlab wo ppt kya hai kuch nahi actually matlab uh, agar baad mein cover karna hoga to kar lenge small small events are there when kenya got independent when namibia got independent who got independent there is nothing those are simply the examples of whatever we have done so this is the intellectual content the events are there theek hai मे बी इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास इफ वी गेट टाइम तो उसमें कवर कर लूंगा बट नेक्स्ट क्लास विल बी गोइंग टू आर लास्ट क्लास सो इन द लास्ट क्लास वी आर गोइंग टू कवर दी साउथ अफ्रीकन अपार्थीड ये कवर करना है टाइम बचेगा तो वो इवेंट वगैरह दिखा दूंगा मैं पीपीटी आप खुद भी पढ़ के देखना अगर आपको नहीं समझ में आएगा तो मेरे को बताना मैं नेक्स्ट क्लास में आपको पढ़ा दूंगा ठीक है कोई उसमें है नहीं ठीक है तो उसमें क्या है उसमें यही ट्रेंड्स हैं लाइक जिम्बाब्वे कीनिया साउथ अफ्रीका व्हाइट सेटलर्स वर मोर तो वहां पर इंडिपेंडेंस डिलेड आएगा तो कुछ नहीं है मतलब 98 पर 95 परसेंट तो हम कवर ही कर चुके हैं बस छोटे छोटे एग्जांपल्स हैं एक दो नाम है ये लीडर था ये ऑर्गेनाइजेशन थी ये कंट्री थी और कुछ नहीं है ठीक है सो बाकी देखते हैं ठीक है तो अरब इज़राइल कंफ्लिक्ट आज कर लेते हैं पहले उसके बाद देखेंगे सो वी आर गोइंग ऑन एट टेन मिनट्स ब्रेक ठीक है टेन मिनट्स ब्रेक तो अभी दो मिनट बाकी हैं एक दो मिनट छोटे छोटे शहरों से आ जाओ वापस आ जाओ हाँ सो so, क्या बात कर रहे थे हम हम बात कर रहे थे ऋषभ के सवाल की सो ऋषभ हैज आज द क्वेश्चन दैट वाई क्वीन ऑफ यूके इज स्टिल हेड ऑफ द स्टेट 
why queen of uk is still head of the state of eight caribbean nations i am asking this because recently barbados decided to become a republic so answer to that question is go, it goes like this so actually matlab overall scenario pata hai kya hai that the british crown is right now it acts like a soft power of britain that is the one point but now let us come to the practical aspect so when the britishers they decided that they are going to decolonize okay after that they wanted to continue neo colonialism in the form of british commonwealth but the criteria for the british commonwealth was that the members of the british commonwealth they should accept allegiance to their to the british crown that is they should accept that sovereignty it lies in the british crown that is why india and pakistan when they got independent in 1947 they were not made a republic they were created as dominions of the british crown but how did we became a republic power was given to the constituent assembly of india and pakistan that you can make such a constitution which declares you a republic so we are making you independent legally you are still part of british empire but otherwise we are transferring all the powers to you just that normally nominally you will remain the uh, you will have allegiance to the british crown so therefore the indian constituent assembly pakistani constituent assembly decided that we are going to be a republic so we exercise that power but earlier we were created as a dominion this situation would be there in all the other countries that is an option will be given but now the problem was this created a problem for the british commonwealth when india declared itself a republic this created a problem for the british commonwealth so therefore the britishers they changed the rules of the british commonwealth and they now said that even if you do not have allegiance to the british crown you can be a member of the british commonwealth so as to continue the soft power of britain so as to continue the special economic relationship with erstwhile colonies but india exercised that option smaller island colonies they did not exercise that option they got the benefit that if we keep allegiance to the british crown then somewhere we will be able to maintain a special relationship with such a big country called britain probably we will be also able to get some aid some money from the britishers because we are having allegiance to the british crown so therefore in real terms they got independence just that in the name they maintained their allegiance to the british crown and by doing this they benefited by getting some british aid by you know so therefore british ka sovereign your soft power is also there that there is still a british empire but in reality there is proper independence there is proper freedom within the british empire so you can make your own laws etc etc everything you can make okay you can sign foreign treaties also whatever you can but allegiance to the british crown ek matlab like soft power type so therefore that option was exercised by india but jo smaller islands unhone nahi kiya wo option exercise theek hai aur agar ab wahan pe aisa situation ban raha hai that they are saying that we want this kind of a republic so therefore so answer ye hai next mahak is asking why britain resisted black majority rule because they themselves were white why britain resisted black majority rule because they themselves were white question thoda sa clear nahi hai uh first of all the isko matlab agar main ya to main tum dobara isko thoda sa reframe kar lo why britain resisted black majority rule because they themselves were white hey, first of all the britishers british they will look after their own interests so what is the situation the situation is that there are certain businessmen who are there in britain who have a good relationship with the white settlers who are elites and who are living in the colonies right so therefore if the police control is with the white settlers if the control of the army is with the white settlers then there is brutal power available with the white settlers and therefore it is convenient for the britishers to allow continuation of white minority rule okay that is one aspect but then when the external pressure starts rising on britain and then the britishers tell the white settlers that you bring about proper democracy by giving right to vote to all blacks and since blacks are the masses they are the majority if they get the right to vote they will obviously elect their own black representatives right they will not be electing white minority elites 
so therefore the britishers when they told the white settlers that bring black majority rule then the white settlers said no if you want that then we are declaring ourselves as a republic we will not bring black majority rule so therefore black majority rule initially it was resisted what is black majority rule black majority rule is independence simple uh, in india you can say brown majority rule indian independence was what bringing brown majority rule in india so what is black majority rule it is nothing it is independence real independence real democracy right so therefore initially the britishers resisted it because they wanted to maintain colonialism later on the white settlers resisted it even when the british colonial power was saying that bring in black majority rule why because the white settlers are like acha to fir hamara kya hoga ye ab ye ab ye jo kaale log hain ye banenge prime minister get lost right to wo problem tha theek hai so that is the situation because of outside pressures because of geopolitics right now let us look at briefly ye jo part hai isko hum kar hi lete hain theek hai to this is a slide please उनको बोल दो स्लाइड पे कर देंगे या कीप इट नॉट सो सो ब्रिटिश डिकॉलोनाइजेशन इन वेस्ट अफ्रीका इट विल बी वेरी इजी बिकॉज हेयर द नंबर ऑफ वाइट सेटलर्स दे आर वेरी लेस है ना तो यहां पे ब्रिटिशर्स को कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं होगी ब्रिटिशर्स कहेंगे हां भैया चलो ठीक है आप डिकोलोनाइज करते हैं सो क्या सिचुएशन है सेम पैटर्न लुक एट द पैटर्न घाना वॉज नोन एज गोल्ड कोस्ट इट गॉट इंडिपेंडेंस इन नाइनटीन फिफ्टी सेवन टिल इंडिपेंडेंस स्ट्रगल बाय बॉयकॉटिंग द फॉरन गुड्स एंड वायलेंट डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन एंड स्ट्राइक्स struggle yielded a new constitution and elections with universal adult franchise so see a threshold is reaching and the britishers they are bringing a new constitution without giving them full independence but local self government so it is similar to the government of india act of 1935 theek in 1952 self government is brought but without full independence 5 saal ke liye 52 to 57 they gained experience in governance under western educated dr nakruma the sorry prime minister nakruma वेस्टर्न एजुकेटेड सो देर फॉर यूपीएससी में भी क्वेश्चन आया हुआ है सारा अपने विजन के नोट से ही सारे क्वेश्चन आंसर हो जाते हैं ठीक है सो फ्रॉम नाइनटीन फिफ्टी टू टू फिफ्टी सेवन डे ट्रांसफर्ड पावर टू अ वेस्टर्न एजुकेटेड मॉडरेट नकरू नाइनटीन फिफ्टी सेवन वेन दे एक्सपीरियंस फुल इंडिपेंडेंस इज गिवन ठीक है तो एग्जाम्पल हो गया ट्रेंड का एग्जाम्पल हो गया नेक्स्ट देखते हैं नेक्स्ट इज नाइजीरिया नाइजीरिया वॉज ऑयल रिच नाइजीरिया में छोटी सी प्रॉब्लम थी किस चीज की there was demographic division into three ethnic groups muslims were there in the north and two other main tribes were there in the west and the east is cheez ke case mein aap kya karoge simply create a federation where the center will be weak and more powers will be there with the states for example india has six schedule where the northeastern nation uh, northeastern states they have more powers yahi aap karte ho to same model azi ki way a western educated leader theek successfully led a mass general strike in 1945 which led to step wise independence ye trend humne notice kiya hai 1954 new constitution with the federation with legislative assembly for the three regions and then full independence ho gaya tanzania again doctor he is a doctor means western educated doctor nyerere led the independence struggle again look in this east africa number of white settlers are decent that's why the trend that whether the dr nerere will be following a reconciliatory approach towards the white minorities or not that becomes important so therefore reconciliatory approach towards whites but demanded black majority rule tanganyika given full independence in 1961 zanzibar island united nearby hai to form modern day tanzania in 1964 so this was before your world war 1 this was german east africa after world war 1 it came under the britishers so therefore this is how they are getting into what is the trend reconciliatory approach towards the whites uganda here independence was delayed due to tribal rivalry because tribal leader of buganda objected to democratic form of government to yahan pe bhi aap kya karoge like years ke six schedule in india so similarly constitution provided for federation with special powers for buganda कोई कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी नहीं है डॉक्टर ओबोटे डॉक्टर वेस्टर्न एजुकेटेड कीनिया अगेन हाई नंबर ऑफ वाइट सेटलर्स आर देयर सो हेयर द चैलेंज ऑफ रिकनसिलियेशन बिटवीन व्हाइट्स एंड ब्लैक्स वाज देयर एंड हेयर द ट्रेंड कम्स ऑफ कॉम्युनिस्ट फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल 
so mao mao secret society was there they were leading communist guerrilla warfare against the britishers the britishers they have two options either to transfer power to these communists or to transfer power to some moderate but first of all they need to suppress the communists so therefore they send their army they suppress the mao mao secret rebellion ठीक है देन केम योर ठीक है तो यहां पे क्या किया देखो वही चीज है ब्लैक्स दे आर स्टार्टिंग टेरर कैंपेन अंडर माओमाओ सीक्रेट सोसाइटी एमरजेंसी इज डिक्लेयर ब्रिटिशर्स दे फर्स्ट सप्रेस द कॉम्युनिस्ट रिबेलियन एंड आफ्टर दैट दे ट्रांसफर पावर टू अ मॉडरेट मॉडरेट हु नॉट बी पार्ट ऑफ कॉम्युनिस्ट कैंप सो दे फॉर जोमो केनियाता मॉडरेट लीडर वेस्टर्न एजुकेटेड स्टडीड इन यूएसएसआर एज वेल एज लंडन रिलीज फ्रॉम जेल and then became the first prime minister and followed a policy of reconciliation theek hai simple central africa yahan pe aa jata hai your zimbabwe that is your north rhodesia south rhodesia and your nyasaland theek hai the ye teen aa jate hain so therefore first of all here they try to delay independence by trying to form a federation of these three colonies theek hai wo fail ho jata hai anyways ultimately kya hota hai In the case of Malawi and Zambia, that is Nyasa Land and North Rhodesia, there is no problem. Black majority rule is brought in. But in case of Zimbabwe, there was a problem because here the number of white settlers were maximum. They had the maximum business interest, maximum यहाँ पे proper control था whites का. तो यहाँ पे problem क्या थी? Problem यही आ गई. अभी आपकी slide change होगी, तो देखेगी problem आपको. एक काम कर सकते हैं लाइट्स ऑफ कर देते हैं सो हेर यू सी वॉट इज हैपनिंग नाउ द ब्रिटिशर्स दे आर रेडी टू गिव इंडिपेंडेंस बट द वाइट सेटलर्स दे आर सेइंग सॉरी वी विल नॉट अलाउ ब्लैक मेजॉरिटी रूल बहुत बढ़िया अब पांच मिनट एक्स्ट्रा तुम रुकोगे ना क्लास में तुम्हारी वजह से रुकोगे right so what is the situation in case of zimbabwe you see this is the situation the britishers they are ready to give independence but they want to bring white majority rule or black majority rule okay that is the situation camera me taraf kar dijiye please aap aa jaiye idhar bahut bahut shukriya theek so therefore ye situation hai the white settlers of zimbabwe they say bhad me jao we will not bring in black majority rule and we are declaring independence from you. so therefore yahan pe ye problem ho gayi when zimbabwe did this outside pressure will apply on zimbabwe how the united nation will put sanctions on zimbabwe right so therefore this is how united nations is acting right so therefore ye trend chal raha hai so <clears throat> now what happened but around the time of 1975 if you look at the map africa ka map hai aapke paas agar aap dekhoge wahan pe so around zimbabwe around zimbabwe there is your mozambique on the right hand side mozambique got independence from portugal in 1975 now when now here when mozambique got independence from portugal in 1975 there was black majority rule in mozambique so mozambique can now apply economic sanctions on zimbabwe mozambique can give safe havens to the gorillas of zimbabwe so therefore now ultimate pressure came on the zimbabwe finally by the time of 1980 the white they succumb to the pressure of mozambique the united nation sanctions the gorilla warfare of robert mugabe and therefore this is how zimbabwe got black majority rule so yahan pe ek aur hum trend kya dekh rahe hain outside pressure ka trend dekh rahe hain second trend that we are seeing when a neighboring country is becoming black majority rule then there is greater chances of so therefore finally mozambique's independence 
in 1975. The whites, they lost an important ally. Decreased support from South Africa also because now the US, they felt that it will result in spread of communism. Right, baki kuch kuch details hai, usme itna zane ki zarurat nahi hai. Cuba maharati tha waha pe. Anyways, so kuch nahi yaha pe conference hui, sab kuch ho gaya. Thik hai. Let us come to, now let us talk about the French decolonization. So as we have mentioned, France was a reluctant decolonizer. France was a reluctant decolonizer. And therefore, around the time of 1944, they said that we have no plan of decolonizing. We have no plan for decolonizing, we have decolonization. But then what happened? From 1946 to 54, in Ki Mati Indo China. In Indo China, the French versus Viet Minh was taking place, and therefore decolonization of decolonization of your Indo China took, took place. Right? So therefore, this is what is happening. After 1954, therefore, they accepted that we cannot delay decolonization. Kuch to karna padega. What were the French possessions? Chote chote possessions: Tunisia, Morocco, Algeria. Right? French West Africa and French Equatorial Africa. Ye Cameroon, Togoland, Madagascar. Ye inke areas hai. Simply, what is the trend here? Tunisia and Morocco in 1956 may they were protectorates with settlers. They were given independence due to following factors. Guerrilla warfare, failure of the military to counter guerrilla warfare, cost of warfare, nationalists were drifting towards communism or socialism. All the trends which we discussed are present here. This is just an example. In case of Algeria, here there was a problem. What happened? The problem was that from the time period of 1832 to 1962, Algeria was a colony. It is a simple thing. What is the simple thing? Simple thing is 1946 to 54, Bejati, Indochina. Hmm? After that, Tunisia, Morocco also got independence. Then 1956, loss in Suez War against Egypt. So therefore, here the French military now decided that too much of disrespect has happened. We will not leave Algeria. Also, Algeria was right next to the Mediterranean Sea in the North Africa. Huge amount of French settlers were living in Algeria. Huge amount of uh, Algerians, number of Algerians, they were living in France. So therefore, in this scenario, the French military said that we will not decolonize. And the society, civil society of France, it came on the verge of civil war because of division. Kuch log kare te decolonize karo, kuch log kare te ne decolonize karenge. Right? So therefore, completely bought chaos ho gaya. Plus these people, Algerians, they started their independence struggle. The diaspora, Algerian diaspora, which was living in France, they used to contribute money to the freedom struggle. So, this way, things are going on. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Right? So, around, finally, around the time of 1958, these people decide that let us bring Mr. Charles de Gaulle to power. Charles de Gaulle was a highly respected figure. He was respected by the military. He was respected by everyone in France because he was a war veteran of World War II. So, therefore, Charles de Gaulle comes to power. But Charles de Gaulle says, I will come to power only when you will change the constitution of France. He said that the president, the executive under the French constitution, he does not have enough powers. So therefore, if you want me to solve the problem, then you have to change the constitution. So therefore, under the pressure of the French military, these people, they change the constitution. And this is how Fifth Republic came into existence in France. Fourth Republic was there from 1946 till year 1958. Third Republic was there from 1870 till year 1870 till your World War II, right? Second Republic was there from 1848 to 52. First Republic was there from your 1791 jab constitution aya till your 1815. Jab old monarchy came back. Anyways, so yahan kya chal hai? So Charles de Gaulle ji aaye and Charles de Gaulle said that I am going to hold negotiation for the independence of Algeria. Let, it, let me discuss. At this point of time, some sections of the French military, especially those who were posted in Algeria, they revolted. They said, we will not even think about giving independence to Algeria. At this point of time, Mr. Charles de Gaulle came to the national television in his full uniform with all the medals of the World War II. And he gave a very stern speech. Basically, he declared that if you do not fall in line, then I am ready to use 
all kind of forces to demolish you. So therefore, suddenly because of this action, the public opinion suddenly swayed in favor of Charles de Gaulle. After that, Charles de Gaulle, he negotiated and finally, in 1962, Algeria was given independence. So, ek ek thoda sa, ek ye example ho jata hai. Thik hai? French West and Equatorial Africa. Yahan pe France ne socha, let us copy British Commonwealth. So, these are small, small countries, mala poor countries, not small. So, therefore, French, Equatorial and West Africa ko in honne offer diya. If you become part of a French Commonwealth, that is French community, then you can have local independence. But otherwise, your taxation system and your foreign policy and defense will be under France. In return, you will get money from France. There were these 12 colonies. Out of those 12, 11 voted, ha ha, bahut badi hai. we will do this. But there was this one small colony called French Guinea. French Guinea rejected by 95% vote. And they said, no, we are going to be independent. This pro proved to be a big inspiration for the rest of the 11 colonies. And later on, the rest of the 11 colonies, they also changed their decision. And they said, yes, we will also be independent. So this is how your African nationalism, it is growing. And your French, they could not build a French community because of this thing. Okay, so simple. Ho gaya. Kuch hai iske Spain, Spain ko kahi pe kuch problem nahi thi. Spain ko bas Sahara mein problem thi because Sahara was very rich in phosphorus. बहुत छोटी-छोटी कंट्रीज हैं जहाँ डिटेल में जाने की जरूरत नहीं है, टाइम वेस्ट होगा अभी, ठीक है? Decolonization by Britain outside Africa, यहाँ पे देखो ब्रिटेन ने एक सिंपल मॉडल बनाया। What was the simple model? Simple model is where the where there are very small small islands, because अभी हमारे दोस्त ने पूछा था बारबाडोस के बारे में। So where there were these very very small islands, there the Britishers they tried a trend. What was the trend? that these countries will not be economically viable after independence because their size is very small, their population is very small. In fact, many of these countries, they said, yaar, hume independent in hona hai, kyu ja rahe ho yaar, aap mat jao yaar, Britain, please, tusi ja rahe ho. Eh? Aakho mein aasu aage unke, Britain, please do not go. Okay, we small, small countries, they are like, we don't have any problem with colonialism, why are you going? Anyways, but there was division of thought. So, what did the Britishers do? They created a federation. Because economically viable nahi the log. So they created a federation and then the Britishers left. But after that, there was problem. There were divisions within this federation over questions like how much money will be contributed by, by one particular colony or a style colony to the national budget. Okay. So, kaun si colony kitna paisa degi national budget ke liye wo difference aage. So, because of these difference of opinions, they decided that no, we don't want to be part of this federation. So, the federation broke and they became separately independent. Allegiance to the crown, it is there. Right. <clears throat> but finally, in the recent times, by looking at the positives of European Union and the positives of ASEAN, these people, they have also established common market in the form of CARICOM. Aapke international relations mein aap padte hoge, CARICOM, that is Caribbean community. Right. So, they are also trying to follow the model of ASEAN. So, jo Britishers ne tab kiya tha, wo ye wapas log repeat karna cha rahe. Right, this is what Britishers are doing. After this, Malaya ka question aai chuka hai, exam mein dubara aega nahi, notes mein diya hua hai, waha pe padh lena, thik hai, ab aage chalte hai. Ye bhi Indonesia wala bhi simple hai, kuch nahi hai, us mein dekh lena. Major cheez kya aari hai, major cheez aate hai, hum ab is pe, kis pe aate hai, Arab-Israel conflict pe. Arab Israel conflict, jitna time bachao, uske saap se, ye hum cover kar lete hai. See, what is this Arab Israel conflict? Arab Israel conflict is that there is a problem, historical problem. Historical problem is that there is a conspiracy theory or reality, I do not know, but it is said that Jews were responsible for murder of Jesus Christ. As a result, there has been historical animosity between the Jews and the Christians. That is why in your 70 AD, the ancient Roman Empire also persecuted Jews. And therefore, as a result, these Jews who were living in Palestine, in se bhaga diya, they lost their homeland. Then repeatedly, multiple times, for example, in 14th century, 13, 14th century, there was this black plague in England. So therefore, such rumors were there that Jews, they are poisoning the wells from which the people drink water. There also Jews were persecuted. 
after that you see your later on hitler also persecuted jews stalin also persecuted jews tsar also persecuted jews earlier meaning because of this christian versus jews the jews jo hai ye mandir ka ghanta ban gaye jo bhi aata baja ke chala jata hai meaning they became a scapegoat okay and they were persecuted repeatedly across time so therefore there was a demand that we want our jewish homeland we want creation of israel the first thing happens with the disintegration of ottoman empire after the world war 1 after the disintegration of the ottoman empire the britishers they came to possess the territory of palestine and the britishers they gave a declaration called as balfour declaration b a l f o u r balfour declaration 1917 whereby they declared that the britishers they prefer or they they prefer a jewish homeland that we, one day we will create israel right so therefore because of this declaration gradually the jews they started returning to palestine initially the population of jews was relatively less but over a period of time the population of jews it started increasing okay and that is when the arabs of palestine they got a little concerned ki chal kya raha hai then came hitler and hitler persecuted jews which further resulted in huge influx of jews into palestine and also because of hitler's holocaust and his anti semitic policies the world opinion also changed the western opinion also shifted in favor of creation of a jewish home state of israel finally after the world war 2 it was the united states of america which became the super power but britain was the country which was dominant in palestine so britain ne koshish kari britain gave both the option one state solution two state solution what is two state solution it is very simple create israel create palestine this solution it was rejected by the palestinians they are like no we don't like this two state solution one state solution that is let there be one country okay and uh, the central government will be very weak that is the union list will have very less items whereas the state list will have maximum items will create two provinces one province of palestine one province of israel and there will be a central government the central government will be very weak this proposal was rejected by the jews and the us they were helmed and no there should be a separate country of israel finally around the time of 1947 the united nations passed a resolution creating israel and palestine separately so in front of your screen what do you see in front of your see you see the screen whereby before 1947 this whole palestine was there look at the map दिस विल मतलब जब मैं प्रिपेयर करता था मेरे लिए बड़े प्रॉब्लम रहती थी यार इसराइल पैलेस्टीन का इशू समझ में नहीं आता कहा गाजा है कहा वेस्ट बैंक है सो दैट्स वाई विल स्टडी इट फ्रॉम द मैप तो देखो पैलेस्टीन देखो कैपिटल जेरूसलम दिख रही है देन ऑन द टॉप यू सी लेबन ऑन द राइट हैंड साइड यू सी जॉर्डन नाउ जॉर्डन एंड पैलेस्टीन दे आर सेपरेटेड बाय रिवर जॉर्डन अब जो रिवर होती है ना उसके दो साइड होते हैं लेफ्ट साइड राइट साइड द लेफ्ट साइड इट इज नोन एज वेस्ट बैंक द राइट साइड विल बी नोन एज ईस्ट बैंक दैट्स वाई द नेम ऑफ द एरिया वेस्ट बैंक बिकॉज इट लाइज ऑन द वेस्ट बैंक ऑफ रिवर जॉर्डन विच सेपरेट्स और विच फॉर्म्स द जोग्राफिकल बॉर्डर बिटवीन जॉर्डन एंड पैलेस्टीन देन ऑन द लेफ्ट एंड साइड यू सी इजिप्ट सुएस कैनाल वेयर द ब्रिटिशर्स आर पोस्टेड and red sea it separates sinai peninsula of egypt from the rest of egypt okay so therefore this is the situation now look what the un does united nation divides 50 50 that 50% of palestine will be israel and 50% of palestine will be palestine yahan pe dhyan dijiye kin cheezon pe first of all you see that whole of jerusalem it is with the palestinians today what is the dispute today the dispute is that your east jerusalem west jerusalem so when united nation created jerusalem the whole of jerusalem was with palestine hmm? again take a look this particular area ye jo area aap dekh rahe ho theek hai this particular area on the left hand side ye jo hai ye theek so this particular area ye gayab ho jayega dheere dheere this is your gaza strip this area acre which is with lebanon it is also given to palestine so 
अब देखना इनकी कैसे माटी पलीत होती है एज सुन एज इसराइल इज क्रिएटेड एज सुन एज इसराइल इज क्रिएटेड द अरब नेशन दे अटैक इसराइल दिस इज राइज ऑफ अरब नेशनलिज्म दे डू नॉट वॉन्ट द वेस्टर्न पावर्स टू क्रिएट दिस इसराइल सो हु अटैक्स इसराइल द अरब नेशन कॉल्ड एज साइराग जेल आर दी साइराग जेल साइराग जेल मैंने न्यूमोनिक बनाया है इट इज सीरिया इराक जॉर्डन इजिप्ट लेबनन वॉट इज द रिजल्ट लुक एट द मैप डोंट फोकस ऑन द वर्ड लुक एट द मैप राइट सो द मैप इज लुक एट योर गाजा नाउ ओनली दैट गाजा स्ट्रिप इज लेफ्ट द एरिया ऑन द राइट हैंड साइड ऑफ सिनाई पेनसुला विच वॉज देयर इट इज गॉन इट इज अंडर द इजराइलीस लुक एट योर जेरूसलम and the area around jerusalem earlier whole of jerusalem was there with the palestinians now west jerusalem has been captured by israel that is the situation look at the area called ekre that area was also with the palestinians but now that area has been captured by israel meaning israel has surrounded the territory of palestine from three sides hmm the forces of jordan they capture west bank they are supporters of palestine and they also capture east jerusalem what is the net result net result is that the palestinians after this war they are either living under the occupation of their friend jordan or their enemy sorry or their enemy israel the net result is 3/4 of palestine is with israel theek next happens the suez war look at the map this is your suez invasion of 31st october 1956 what was the problem here the problem here was that united states of america was funding a dam in egypt the name of that dam was aswan dam and that dam will be very important for egypt because it will provide for hydroelectricity power generation that is point number 1 to us ek dam bana raha hai aswan dam ठीक है जी बट देन द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इराक सॉरी द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इजिप्ट इट वॉज प्रो वेस्ट गवर्नमेंट द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इजिप्ट वॉज प्रो वेस्ट गवर्नमेंट प्लस इजिप्ट इट हैड अ ट्रीटी विद द ब्रिटिशर्स दैट द ब्रिटिश ट्रूप दे विल बी प्रेजेंट इन द सुज कैनाल ऑल्सो द सुज कैनाल वॉज ओन्ड बाय कंपनी विच वॉज नॉट इजिप्शियन कंपनी इट वॉज अ ब्रिटिश कंपनी विथ सम फ्रेंच स्टेक ऑल्सो ठीक है सो ऑल द मनी विच is being earned by the suez canal it is going into the pocket of british that is the situation till 1954 in 1954 the nationalist army of egypt under colonel abdel gamel nazer who was one of the founding member of nam delhi mein colonel abdel nazer road bhi hai iit ke paas theek hai iit delhi ke paas anyways coming back to the topic so therefore the nationalist army they overthrow the government and colonel gamal abdel nazer he comes to power right he comes to power and he does not like the presence of the british troops in the suez canal hmm? second thing that he does is he starts supporting the independence struggle of algeria algeria kahan hai on the left hand side of egypt there is algeria it is a french colony theek hai therefore there is animosity now between algeria sorry there is animosity now between your france and your egypt that is one point secondly in 1955 egypt signs a arms treaty with czechoslovakia czechoslovakia since 1948 is a communist country so therefore now the britishers the french the us they think that mr gamal abdel nazer he is making egypt part of the communist camp now us needs to punish egypt so us says i will stop funding the construction of aswan dam therefore now kamal uh, your colonel he is under tension theek hai colonel nasir he is under tension ki yaar ye to galat ho gaya aswan dam right this is the situation so therefore now abhiya paisa chahiye aswan dam is important so how to construct aswan dam kahan se paisa aa sakta hai from where will the money come so he 
thinks that okay this Suez Canal if the Egyptians they are able to get back the Suez Canal then they will be able to get the money for construction of Aswan Dam. So therefore Colonel, Colonel Nazir gives a proper package proper deal to the Britishers that I will compensate you for your losses but you exit the Suez Canal. A treaty was due for renovation. Colonel Nasser said that I will not renew the treaty which allows the British troops in the Suez Canal. Tum kato se niklo. This resulted in a problem. What was the problem between Egypt and Israel? Bhaiya, 1948 war has been fought. And after that, Mr. Nasser was conducting Fidain attacks. No, Fidain attacks, Allah Akbar, broom. Okay. Such kind of attacks were being done in Israel against the Israelis in favor of the Palestinians. So therefore there is this dispute between Egypt and Israel. So therefore this is how we see that Egypt versus US, Egypt versus Britain, Egypt versus France, Egypt versus Israel. Colonel Nasser has become the face of Arab nationalism. He is the person who is opposing these western powers. who is opposing these western powers right that is the situation so therefore in 1956 this Suez war breaks out the Britishers they refuse ki bhi se. Suez war breaks out in this war what is the result in this war Egypt is a winner as far as you look towards the Suez Canal because the Britishers and the, the Britishers and the French they are unable to retain the control of the Suez Canal. The British troops, they are unable to retain the control of the Suez Canal and Suez Canal, it is captured by the Egyptians. But when you look at Israel, then Israel is the winner because you look at it, they capture Gaza plus they capture Sinai Peninsula. So therefore, who are the winners? Israel is a winner and Egypt is a winner. What is the result? The result of this war is this. Look at the map. Suez Canal, now it is with Egypt and as part of the negotiations carried out by the United Nation, the Israelis, they decide that okay, we will exit Gaza, we will also exit the Sinai Peninsula, but in return, the Egyptians, they should promise that they will stop the Fidayin Hamlas. So therefore, the Egyptians said that okay, we will stop the Fidayin Hamlas, but you exit the Sinai Peninsula. So this is the Chalo. So this Suez War. Hua. What is the importance of Suez War? Importance of Suez War is that the British confidence came crashing down. Egypt is defeating Britain. So therefore, after this 1956, because an Arab country, because an African country is able to defeat Britain and France in a war, therefore this will give a great boost to rise of nationalism in whole of Africa. And therefore, the Britishers, they will realize that a wave of change has hit Africa. And that is why we see in 1957, finally your Ghana is made independent. So there is rise in Arab nationalism, there is rise in African nationalism, there is demolition of the perception that Britain is a superpower. Hoti hogi before World War II, hoti hogi ab nahi hai. Theek hai? There is loss of prestige for the French also. Next comes the Six Day War of 1967. Six Day War of 1967. In this war, what happened? It had got independence in 1962, Arab nation. So therefore, it also now joined the pact. Now they attack Israel. Israel bilkul abhimanyu type aadmi. Thik hai, supported by the US arms, ammunition, etc. Tehs nehs kar dita bhaiya. This map is very important. This war is very important because in the present times, what is the core demand of the Palestinians? The core demand of the Palestinians is we want to go back to pre-1967 status. They always talk about pre-1967 status. Pre-1967 status. What is the pre-1967 status? The pre-1967 status is this. The areas which you see in your shadows. This is your pre-1967 status. Gaza is there. 
Gaza is there with your Palestinians. East Jerusalem is there with the Palestinians. West Bank is there with the Palestinians. This is your P1967 situation. But what happens in the 1967 is whole of Palestine is captured by Israelis. Gaza is captured, East Jerusalem is captured, West Bank is captured, Syria ka Golan Heights is captured, Egypt ka Sinai Peninsula is captured. And, and now these people say, no, we will not return Sinai Peninsula, we will not return, we will not return Golan Heights of Syria. Then comes the Yom Kippur War. Yom Kippur War, 1973, here Yom Kippur is a festival of Jews. S Sinai Peninsula of uh, Egypt, it is under the Israelis. And the Golan Heights of Syria, it is under the Israelis. Syria and Egypt, they want their areas back. They think that they will be able to surprise the Jews who will be celebrating the Yom Kippur festival. They attack. But Israel, to bhiya, Israel to Israel. If you eat food, you eat food in the gym. Pistol, pistol Anyways, so they are able to, Israel again defeats Egypt and Syria. Okay, both lana, both bejiti we are in key. Okay, again defeated. At this point of time, Israel declares, I will never give back Golan Heights to Syria. Point number one, right? And therefore, this war ends. At this point of time, finally, to end the war, the US intervenes. And this results in Camp David Accords of 1979. Okay, Camp David Accords of 1979 me kya tha that finally the US intervened, and after the Camp David Accords, three four things happened. For the first time in the history, any Arab nation, that also Egypt, recognized that Israel has a right to exist. For the first time, an Arab nation recognized that Israel has a right to exist. That is point number one, right? So therefore, the status of war which was there since 1948 between Egypt and Israel, that is ended. Second part is the Israelis, they agree to give back the Sinai Peninsula to the Egypts, but with a condition, with two conditions. Recently, oil had been discovered in the Sinai Peninsula. So therefore, the Egyptians, they had to assure Israel of oil supply from Sinai Peninsula. Point number two, Sinai Peninsula will remain demilitarized. So, like your Rhineland was demilitarized in case of World War I. Similarly, Sinai Peninsula was demilitarized as a confidence building measure. Ki bhaiya, 1948 mein tumne attack kiya, 1956 mein hamari ladai hui, 1967 mein tumne attack kiya, bhaiya, tum chate kya ho? Let us create a demilitarized zone. So that if tomorrow you try to attack, I get a decent enough early warning signal. So, Egypt agreed to these two conditions. Who is the president? President Sadat was there. What was the result? The nationalist, Arab nationalist, they murdered President Sadat. So therefore, this is how the things are progressing. So these are the Camp David Accords. What is the present status? The present status is that Israelis, they continue to build settlements in West Bank. East Jerusalem and Gaza, which are the three areas demanded by the Palestinians. In 1980s, Israel said that we will never give back Golan Heights to Syria. Palestinian desire kya hai pre-1967 position. They want West Bank, East Jerusalem as capital and Gaza. Baaki fir Oslo Accords wagaira huye, hai, to usually our syllabus is there till 1991. So the content is there in your all of these things but the summary is what summary is that through the oslo accords these people they try to come to a solution that we will create a palestine with capital of east jerusalem but the radical factions of palestine that is the you know hamas for example they disagree right so therefore similarly the radical factions of israel they also disagree that how can you create palestine so therefore, the Prime Minister of Israel who negotiated the Oslo Accords, he was murdered. And Hamas and Hezbollah, Hezbollah is of Lebanon, they are Shias. Hamas is there in the Gaza Strip. They also started Intifada. Intifada means they started an attack, rocket launchers, etc. The net result is, aajke time pe, there is huge amount of problem. Gaza is under the control of Hamas. Lebanon has Hezbollah who keep on doing terrorist attacks. They created a Palestinian authority. Jisko transfer of power hota, 
बट दैट पैलेस्टीनियन अथॉरिटी उसका कुछ नहीं है वो एमसीडी की तरह काम करती बेचारी ठीक है सो वेस्ट बैंक का कुछ एरिया सम एरिया ऑफ वेस्ट बैंक इज अंडर दैलेस्टीनियन अथॉरिटी अदरवाइज गाजा इज ऑल्सो नॉट अंडर दैम राइट एंड सेटलमेंट आर कॉन्टिन्यूइंग जहां तक मेरा असेसमेंट है मेरा असेसमेंट तो यही है कि अल्टीमेटली ये पैलेस्टीन खत्म ही हो जाएगा ठीक है सो एनीवेज नेक्स्ट क्लास विल बी द लास्ट क्लास एंड इन द लास्ट क्लास द टॉपिक दैट विल बी कवरिंग विल बी योर साउथ अफ्रीकन अपार्थीड दैट इज द टॉपिक दैट विल कवर बाकी अभी तक की प्रिपरेशन में अगर आपका कोई भी डाउट हो आपको लगता है कि कोई एक मेजर टॉपिक है जो आपको बिल्कुल समझ नहीं आया या फिर आपको किसी भी चीज में कोई हेल्प चाहिए ठीक है तो वो आप नेक्स्ट क्लास में डिस्कस कर सकते हो ठीक है सो थैंक यू फॉर योर टाइम एंड अपोलॉजीज फॉर टेकिंग योर कितने एक्स्ट्रा टेन मिनट्स एक्स्ट्रा ओके थैंक यू